All right, man. Jamil Charlo is saying that he's struggling to make some weight, make weight for uh, to move up to 168. So he said it's it's been a struggle to get up there. Now you heard Tony Harrison say, you know, I interviewed him a couple months ago. You heard Tony Harrison pretty much say that uh, it was stupid of him to jump up in two weight classes and not demand that you know Canelo, you know, come down and wait a little bit. Um, Canelo not giving no giving no leeway to nobody. He ain't especially to no black fighter. He like freezer and the black fighters is like the suit or like the sands and shit, man. He ain't giving no black fighters nothing. He ain't giving no fighter. Even Mexican fighters, he viewed them like that too. He ain't giving them nothing, bro. He ain't giving them them boys nothing. You get no love in my Eminem boys. He ain't giving them boys nothing, bro. He ain't giving them boys no room for leeway. Nothing, bro. Canelo Alvarez ain't doing no catch weight, no weight catch, no no nothing. He need to be the dominant A side. He want to drain you, and if you small, he want to blow up and come in super duper big against you. Um, he ain't he ain't like he ain't doing none of that, bro. He ain't doing none of that. He want every advantage in the book. Every advantage. Jamel explains that it's tough to transform his body into a super middleweight. See, the excuses are already started, and that's what people going to say. He said, you know, truthfully, I didn't think this fight would ever happen, but it presented itself, and I took it, and it's happening now. It's never too late. Charlo told Boxing.com in an interview. Canelo and my style are completely different. He's much shorter than me, but he's a little bit thicker, and that's what makes for a great fight. He said, I mean, I really don't know that just yet. If I'm a 168-pound fighter moving fighter, moving fighter, 168 is considerably still kind of like not my weight division. It's not easy to make 168. I have to gain weight. Gaining weight when you're working really hard is really tough. I can easily walk around at 168. I'm definitely not a naturally bigger fighter, but at 168, it's not my weight division. So he basically telling you that, hey, if I lose, this is my excuse because <laughs> I'm for the streets. <laughs> he says it's a tough transfer transform your body. It's a task that has to happen sometimes to make the best fights in boxing. You have to take chances and risks, and that's just the natural uh, nature of the game. We want to continue to put on for the sport because fights like this make the sport of boxing very uh, noticeable and top notch. We have to continue doing these things, and he's right about that. You know, this is the, the really only interesting fight that's that's on tap for real. You know, now kind of like Eddie Hearn kind of talking about how, you know, Wilder and Joshua, if it fall apart, Joshua going to fight in December still. So them, them ninjas might not fight. So it don't surprise me. When you start to look at the schedule, yeah, you got to, you know, you got some possibilities of some really good fights. Andrade and Benavidez and, you know, Shakur and Frank Martin, first big coming up. Dev Haney reaches progress. So, yeah, everybody, man, boxing is just, they just so dumb in boxing. Because all they want to do is wait for football and basketball to come on. And then they want to compete with them on Saturday, plus MMA, UFC. And they want to compete with them on Saturday, you know, on for airtime. That's just the dumbest thing in the world. Why not put a, put a hell of a... So summer line up together and dominate the summer. Why would you want to dominate the fall to the fall area when everybody else going to be going outside shopping before it gets too cold? Everybody going to be attention is going to be going on their kids, football games, homecoming, basketball season. They, their attention going to be doing that. Which one would you rather go to a basketball, football game to a boxing event? They going to rather go to the basketball, football game. The kids having games come up. The kids having homecoming coming up. All that type of stuff. Kids going back to school. So why would you, why would you put your best foot forward in a time where don't nobody give a fuck about what you're doing? And then you crying about the numbers. These lazy ass fighters, if it's them, they need to stop bitching and complaining about you know fighting in the summertime. Fuck y'all summer, dude. Y'all the second rate sport. Get in there and, and fight and fight in the summertime. And fight in the summertime.
and that's and that's their problem right now. But not to venture off too much, you know, everybody want to just you know pile up in the fall, you know, and y'all don't matter in the fall. It's a wrap. I'd rather go watch free football than free, you know, free free basketball before I I, I do that. Pay for all that shit. So they wonder why their model is so stupid and so fucked up. Because everybody should be fighting in the summertime. It shouldn't have been a weekend that a fight shouldn't have came on. It was ever a time to double and triple up fights, and it was in the summertime. So now everybody gonna move on. But back to Charlo talking about transforming his body. I remember Bernard jumped up two weight classes. Really is one because he fought at 68 before and he fought Kelly Pavlik. Like one, I forget. I think it might have been. I think he fought. Yeah, I think he fought Pavlik. Hold on, I don't want to lie to y'all ninjas. I don't want to lie about it, man. To be but Mackie Shieldstone helped him, you know, you know, meld his body for Bernard Hopkins. I mean, for uh, Antonio Tarver and shit. So, yeah, he fought Tarver first. He jumped up after he lost to Jermaine Taylor. He jumped up two weight classes and fought Tarver like six months later. Um, and Mackie Shieldstone, I remember watching the HBO, like, little insert of documentary, you know, helped him mold his body into being a light heavyweight. But you got to remember... Bernard Hopkins made his debut at super middleweight. That was many, many moons ago from that point. But, yeah, it's going to be a test moving up in weight because you want to be able to maintain your speed but still be able to maintain a little bit of power and a lot of durability so you can take the banging and the, and the, and the, and just the, the physicality of what's going on. But to me, it's already sounding like, dude, we are, everybody know what this is. Just like Bob Aram said, you know, he basically said that, you know, Charlo ain't got shit for Canelo. It's gonna be easy night, and it's a money grab. It's a it's a layup for the first fight. But with Canelo, it ain't always been a layup. Even the fights that you know he posed to blow through guys, he still looked a little bit shaky. Like versus Amir Khan, he looked a little bit like he looked a little bit shaky versus Amir Khan has. Let's call it being a bean. Come on, he looked a little bit shaky. So, um, so you know, it ain't always easy for Canelo Alvarez. It ain't always easy. It's, you know, he's just not that great a fighter. That's why most of his fight, the majority of his fights don't have any degrees of separation. He always struggling or right closer than expected. Come on, elite level undisputed fighter ain't about to end that punch, ain't about to sit there and play with no freaking Rocky Fielding. Come on. But as far as him moving, getting his body, you know, instead of getting getting his body together, bro, you know, talking about back to Charlo getting his body together, whatever, dude, you know, he got to do what he got to do. And what you want to do when you, when you, when you, I give him some advice here. I'm going to do some fitness. I'm going to get to a fitness video this week for sure. All right. But what he want to do, you want to put that weight on your legs <laughs> and put a little bit of it and then strengthen your core up. That's what you want to do. I know he need to move and all that, but I put that weight in my legs so I can, t so I can, those are, that core in the legs are the shock, shock absorber. They would absorb the punishment and the physicality. You know? That's what they do. And that's going to make him stronger, and that's where he's going to generate his power at. You know? So that's what that's what, that's what what that would be my game plan. You know, up top, everything will be fast and explosive. Everything I would do up top would be fast. You know, it would just be – it would be – it would just be – you know, um, even on my biceps, that'd be lightweights and just real fast. Not so much squeeze. They'd just be anything I'd be working on is fast twitch. Even when I get on the bench, it'd just be speed pumps. You know, it'd be speed pumps. You know, um, everything below the waist would just be weighted. The core workouts would be weighted core workouts, you know. But when I'm doing... You know, my push-ups and pull-ups and dips and 
what other weight training I'm doing, the upper body wise, is fast and explosive. You know, everything is fast and explosive. When I do my back workouts, they fast and explosive. When I do all my chest workouts, they fast and explosive. Triceps, fast and explosive. So I'll be working on waking up those fast switch muscles. I put all my heavy weight in my legs. I do a lot of weighted core, but everything else on the upper body, I just be working on for speed. But, but yeah, without a tune up, you know, and transferring your body to being the true six super middleweight, that's hard because you don't get a tune up. So, um, that's why a lot of people feel like this is a hell of an uphill battle for him. And they right. Canelo acclimated, but you know, one thing I'll do is like I said, I put the I strengthen the hell out of my legs, strengthen the hell out of my core, because I know he's gonna want to go to the body. And I just be I'll be fast up top. I'll be super fast up top. Super. Everything, all my workouts. My pad workouts will be on about speed and combination punches. You know, thanks, in and out. You know, but we'll see, man. But hey, thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and that subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live or drop the video. Financially, want to support the channel, cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313. Venmo CJ Good 313, PayPal link description. Hit the link tree. Follow me on Twitch, Twitter, X, Spotify, Anchor, Apple, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, plenty of other places. The link tree will take you everywhere. Peace.